I'd like to start out by asking you all a question. Uh, does everybody or anybody know where you were on 9-11, 2001? Everybody, right? I was in Chicago, and I was working in the Sears Tower. <laughs> so how ironic, right? So I get a phone call from my mother, and she says, did you hear what happened? And I said, no. She says, get to a TV as soon as you can. And then I lost contact with her. So she's freaking out because she doesn't know what happened to me. I'm in the tallest building in America, right? So my partner and I go down. We go across the street to a bar. And we walk in and we see a plane hitting the building. And I said, oh my gosh, this must be what my mother was talking about. So afterwards, I called my mother back, told her I was okay. And she had told me that we had been attacked by two planes hitting, hitting the World Trade Centers. Tower one and tower two. So right away I'm thinking, well, I saw one of the planes hit. So I'm thinking that I saw the first plane hit that she was describing to me when actually I was seeing the second plane hit live. So we're going to fast forward a little bit to 2002. Uh, I'm working at a bar in Chicago, and I'm dating this gal for a few weeks, and she has a niece, and she's a year and a half old, and she has a brain tumor. And she asked me if I would put on a benefit to help raise money to, to cover the medical costs of the, of, of the brain, uh, the brain. What they had was, they had situation where they didn't know what happened to the little girl at one point in time. They couldn't properly diagnose her. So they were doing test after test. So these people were so far in debt, it was just unbelievable. I mean, we all, most of us probably have children. We can understand a situation like that. So my heart went out to them. And I decided to put out a benefit. And as an artist, you know, at that time, I just did it as a hobby. I really didn't do anything special with it or anything like that. And... Uh, that was the year Walter Payton had passed away. I don't know if we have any football fans out there, but Sweetness passed away, yes. And uh, I thought it was fitting to do a picture of Walter Payton for that benefit. So I looked at the Wheaties box cover that I had in my house. A couple hours later, I whipped it up, and I was like, all right, we're, we're getting somewhere now. And then I thought, maybe I should do a second piece, right? Anything to help raise money for this little girl. So as I'm sitting at my art table, I'm brainstorming, and I'm trying to figure out what else, what else would people want to support and buy and actually own and put on their wall? So I was developing as an artist mentally, not realizing, gee, what are people really like, you know? As a kid, I always wanted to be an artist. You show it to me, I could draw it. I'm like Rain Man when it comes like that. I already have it done in my brain. You know what I mean? It's, it's a chalkboard, and I already have the finished product in my head. That's the hard part, right? The easy part's just putting it on paper for me. So I'm brainstorming, and I, I got a block. I don't know what I'm going to draw. So behind me, I have on the A&E channel, and they had a special on 9-11. So as I'm trying to brainstorm in this and that, the attention grabs my ear of the program, and before I knew it, I looked over my shoulder. And when I looked over my shoulder, I saw the live video image of the three firefighters hoisting up the American flag after the attacks. So uh, needless to say, light bulb went off in my head. About 15 hours later, I was done with it. So that Saturday, I go have the benefit. It's a smashing success. And... I had several first responders that attended the benefit, and they asked me, where did you get this? Uh, how can I get one? One guy wanted to, to purchase one for his fire chief that was retiring. Another one said, my whole family's been firefighters for 36 years. I want to put one in the house. Another one says, oh, my dad would love this for Christmas. So I got bombarded by all these people, and I said, you know what? I don't feel right making money off a of tragedy, okay? So what I decided to do was to give them to a couple of the firehouses, donate them. Now, at the time, I worked, 
I ran security in the bleachers at Wrigley Field for about three years. I was there for Sammy Sosa's court bat incident. I was there, you Cub fans should know this, for Steve Bartman, which really wasn't his fault, let's face it, okay? It's all about the billy goat. You know, when they kicked him out, that was it. The curse was in, and no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I hope the Cubs win the World Series this year, even though I am a Yankees fan, but I hope the Cubs win the World Series. Anyway, I was friends with a few of the firefighters from Engine 78 across the street. And as many of you know, if you watch a Cubs game from time to time, they'll show the firehouse across the street. So them guys, I would let them come in early. I'd get in trouble for it every time, but I would still do it. I'd let them come in early, and I would let them get the batting practice home run balls because they would take those balls to children's hospitals and give them to the sick kids. So even though I, I got an earful on a daily basis about it, I knew in my heart I was doing the right thing. And, you know, you know, I was born and raised in Chicago, so, we, you know, sometimes we make our own rules, you know. <laughs> Doesn't happen often. Never in politics, but it has been known to happen from time to time. So, from doing that, you know, just in loose conversation, I told the guys, you know, that I created this picture and about the benefit and all that, and they went nuts. They were like, oh, we need one. We got to have one. So I said, okay. So I, I worked the next night, I brought them a picture, and that's actually the first firehouse that I donated one of these pictures to. Uh, that was 14 years ago, and that was 732 pictures ago. Since then, I've been donating pictures all over the world to different firehouses, military installations, fundraising uh, organizations, charity events, benefits, you name it. Uh, there probably isn't five organizations you guys could name off that I have not donated to. Wounded Warriors, the Gary Sinise Foundation, Operation Support Our Troops America, and the list will go on and on. Whether it was for breast cancer or it was for animal care, everybody liked the picture. It would always raise pretty good money for, for the benefit that they were, you know, whatever the cause was. And I said, okay, maybe I got something here. So as I started donating them, I had fire departments contacting me, wanting me to come out and visit them. So I made it a point to hand deliver each picture I donated within the U.S. So in New York was the first year I officially unveiled this to the public after I visited that Engine 78 in Chicago. I donated 15 pictures there, uh, never been in New York before, didn't know anybody there, but my heart drove me there and I said, you know what, I got to do something with this. Even though I didn't know what I was going to do yet, I knew in my heart I needed to be in New York on 9-11, I needed to talk to these firefighters and let them know that we care, we love you, we appreciate you, we thank you for your service, for what you do. After that, they called me up in California, in L.A. They asked me to come out there. So I did a West Coast trip. I, yeah, we flew into L.A. And then from there, I donated four pictures to the, to the fire departments there. Then uh, my, putty, my, my buddy, he was a cook at the bar when I started doing this, to tell you how freaky this story is. He was a cook. He was going to Columbia uh, School in Chicago. He wanted to be a filmmaker, and uh, he had a camera. So I was like, hey, you want to come with me? Let's go on some road trips. So his name is Jacob Hector. I call him Jake. So Jake and I, we went on a road trip. We went to, flew to L.A., donated to those firehouses. Then we ended up going, driving up to Vegas. I stayed in Las Vegas for a total of 11 hours just to bring pictures up to the fire departments. Not a gambler, not a big fan of Vegas, but they have fire departments up there, I learned. So I had to stop up there and visit them, right? From there, I went to Phoenix. Donated a few to the, to the Phoenix Fire Department out here. And then we drove back to L.A. When I get back to L.A., I meet uh, Captain Carlos Calveo. He's an assistant fire chief for the L.A. City Fire Department. And he's in charge of all the media for L.A., for the fire department. So when I walk in to meet the guy, I talked to him on the phone for about two weeks. When I go to meet the guy, he basically 
He's got a picture with himself and John Travolta. He's got a picture with himself and Arnold Schwarzenegger. And I said, wow, this is the guy I got to know, you know. <laughs> so he's on the phone. He gets off the phone. About five minutes later, he's got me in the St. Patrick's Day parade, sitting next to Robert Patrick, the actor. I don't know if you know him. He's, he was the uh, Terminator, the liquid Terminator in Terminator 2. And I also had Jay Russell on this side of me, who was the director of Ladder 49. So to make a long story short, had a heck of a road trip and was in a parade too. So all those stories that I just told you about bring me to this moment right now. And what I'd like to do is, instead of showing you pictures and describing things that have happened to me on this journey, I'd like to incorporate you all right now and do some donations live right in front of you. So the first guest I would like to bring out and present a picture to, she had two of her relatives that were first responders in New York when the attacks happened and they perished. So in honor of them, I would like to bring out Maureen Garrity and present a picture to her. I know how much this picture means to me, and I know how much it means to you. And if there's anything you'd like to say, feel free. Well, well, I really just want to say thank you to you. You are such an inspiration to me, and I really love the work that you're doing everywhere, Mark. And thank you. I will, I'm just honored to receive this, and my family is just going to enjoy it forever. And, you know, this same uh, picture you gave to my brother's firehouse. So now I yeah, how ironic is that? So, so that's really awesome. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Mm. Okay, the next guest I'd like to bring out is Fire Chief Ott. He is the uh, Assistant Fire Chief of Fountain Hills. Hi, Mark. How are you? Good. This one here I'd like to present to the Fountain Hills Fire Department. Well, thank you for that. And on behalf of our department, we're grateful. And uh, sorry, I'm a Diamondbacks fan. Sorry about the uh, oh, that's okay. In that's okay. But uh, I'm honored to be here with you and, and uh, Maureen. She's a real hero. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Okay. And last but not least, I have, I have another special guest. Uh, no more special than the others, but different in his own way. I'd like to present a picture to the 1996 gold medalist. Decathlete Dan O'Brien. Wow. And I would like to present this to you for being a great American hero. You know, I donate these in honor of remembering America's heroes, and a lot of times they wear different uniforms. And each person that I have up here, they all wear different uniforms, but we all come from the same place. So I know you have a few words that you'd Absolutely. like to say. Absolutely. Thank you, Mark. First of all, let's give it up for Mark John once again for just his incredible work. You know, I'm so inspired by you because you took action. You saw something that you were passionate about. Without hesitation, you just leaped forward and went for it. You know, and I think that's what connects us in the, in the way that, you know, I'm certainly not a fireman. I'm not a... I'm not a policeman, but I was fortunate enough to represent the United States. And I, I, uh, in 2012, I went into the uh, U.S. Olympic Hall of Fame, and I thanked the, I thanked the U.S. Olympic Committee for letting me represent the United States. So I, I've dr I dreamt about competing for the United States ever since I was a kid. I saw the miracle on ice. Some of you all remember that. Some of you maybe just be too young to remember that. But I was there, and I lived it live. And I remember after that game was over, I said, I'm going to the Olympics. And I thought, how cool would it be to wear the USA uniform and represent this country? Well, I got my opportunity to represent the country on many occasions, but none greater than the 1996 Olympics where I won the gold medal. And, and I, got a, I got a really uh, fantastic present the night I won the gold medal. And I, it just wasn't the gold medal, but it was what happened afterwards. Um, when you get done competing at the Olympic Games, you run a victory lap and you kiss mom and dad, and then you go into a little room and you pee in a cup. And they look at it real closely, and before they give you your medal, they clear you. And um, usually, um, when the track meet's over, everybody goes home. 
1996 in Atlanta was a little bit different. I didn't even plan on, if I won the gold, getting my award that night. They usually bring you back the next day, but it was 10.30, 11 o'clock at night, and they said, we're giving your award tonight. And I was just like, everybody's gone. I was the last event. And so they said, no, we're going to do the award ceremony tonight. And I stepped out of the tunnel, and nobody had left. And I got to receive my gold medal in front of 100,000 Americans, listen to the national anthem, and watch the flag go up. And it was just an incredible feeling. Uh, being at the Olympics was, was just something I can't describe. When, when you're waiting for it to be your turn, you can't wait till you get out there. And then when you're out there, you're scared to death, and all you want, it to be, all you want it to, is to, for it to be over. And then when it's over, you say to yourself, wow, that was amazing. I can't wait, to, I can't wait until I can do it again. So, you know, what that experience has really shown me, especially since when I was a kid I wanted to do it, you know, it's my job now to tell kids and other people that no dream is too big. Strive and, and look for those opportunities that, that you can do something great in your life. And, and I think what connects us is that we were doers. You know, we saw something that we were passionate about. And, uh, and I, certainly, I certainly thank you for this honor, but uh, even more, I thank you for being my friend. Thank you. And in closing, all I'd like to say is, do something with your heart. We're all Americans. We are the human race. There is no race. We are all the human race. Let's do some good like we used to on September 12th, 2001. Thank you very much for listening to me.